So happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, so a handful of things to address today in terms of the market. Obviously, things have been moving and changing. I feel like strategies and um, advice is changing pretty much week to week. But uh, we've seen a drop in the treasuries that seems to have been, kind of be staying right around like the 330 to 340 mark on the 10-year. Um, so that's been good for rates. We've seen rates drop. Now, that said, a lot of there's a lot of chatter about a credit tightening uh, that's going to be happening with banks. Okay, so uh, have I seen it? Yes. Is it as dramatic as it sounds? That probably depends on the market that you're in. So that being said, San Diego is a pretty strong market. Uh, we do have lenders available. There are definitely less lenders than we had. And certainly a lot of our go-tos over the last you know, five or so years may not be the go-tos today. So the market has definitely shifted and changed. And um, lenders who had a big appetite for doing deals previously may not have that same appetite today. So this is when having a good mortgage broker has um, is very, very valuable because as a mortgage broker, I have to be on top of, you know, who's lending, what are they doing, uh, what kind of programs are they offering and things like that. So uh, this is the time where I've had clients that maybe were super dedicated to one bank. They gave all their business to that particular bank and now that bank is not lending anymore. And so then they reach out to me and say, hey, Crystal, what do you got? This is what I'm looking at. This is what I need. Uh, so I've been seeing a lot more of those calls recently, which is obviously <laughs> great for us. But um, there, are, there are still lenders lending. So in terms of the multifamily space, there are definitely lenders lending. In fact, there are small, regional banks that are very healthy. They just weren't aggressively doing loans over the last, you know, two, three, four years. So they don't have like this crazy, you know, loan to deposit ratio. They're not kind of out of whack in that sense. So they're able to continue lending in this market. Uh, there are also small regional banks who were not the most competitive. So they didn't have the lowest rates, which meant that they probably had lower volume as well. And their margins weren't as tight as some of the lenders that were super competitive rate wise. So now those lenders are are available to lend. So uh, lending is not dead. That sound that seems to be kind of the the conversation in the media that lending is dead, and I'm I'm sure that it is in certain areas. But we are in a really really great market, a strong market for real estate, especially. And so we do have many many options outside of you know agency uh, debt. So uh, that's really good for us in San Diego. That being said inventory is still incredibly low. So we're still about 50% lower than we should be to have healthy inventory. So, um, and that being said too, cap rates are still really low. Like when I go look on LoopNet or CoStar at some of these deals that are listed, cap rates are, you know, sometimes two, three, four percent when interest rates are more like, you know, five and a half percent, maybe even six, depending on, um, what loan you're looking at. So uh, there's still a bit of a gap there, which is uh, not super motivating for buyers, uh, but also sellers are not super motivated to sell. So we have this kind of low inventory problem. But I have seen business pick up in the last few weeks. Uh, rates have ticked down just enough to start to spark some interest. And I think people are getting a little bit more uh, confidence that they kind of see an end in sight to these high rates and maybe the market, uh, you know, so, it's, I'm seeing that people are wanting to get active again. Uh, people are still being cautious, but we're definitely seeing a, a slight uptick in requests and business and all that good stuff. So people that were all previously on the sidelines are, are, are now trying to get off the sidelines, which is really good news. Now, on top of that, we've seen a huge kind of run from just keeping your cash in a standard checking account. I think a lot of people have been looking at this and saying, um, wow, my, my cash is sitting in a checking account that's maybe earning 1% interest. Um, the market's kind of weird. I don't really want to invest right now. Like, you know, maybe I think the stock market's going to tank further. Um, real estate's not quite as, I don't feel as confident in real estate as I want to be. So now they're looking at the cash that's been sitting in the bank and they're seeing that they could earn 
four, five, six, even 7% on their money in a money market account or a CD. So there has been a move from, you know, cash just sitting in checking accounts. I believe it's to the tune of about a trillion dollars. Uh, so it's not really money necessarily leaving banks, but it's just going into higher interest bearing accounts, which are much more available right now. So that's the conversation I've been having with some clients. So for example, if you have a line of credit, one of the things that we saw in the last cycle was that a lot of banks were closing lines of credit, especially if they weren't drawn on. So some of my clients I've said, you know, maybe it's a good idea for you to draw that line of credit, pull that cash out if if you feel like your bank might close that line. I know that I've done that. And then I can take that cash and go put it in an interest bearing account and either break even on my money or maybe end up paying like two or two and a half percent on the money uh, and the difference. Like let's say that your line of credit is at, you know, seven percent and then you can get, you know, four and a half percent interest in a money market account. Is it worth two and a half percent that you're paying on that money? to have that in the, just to make sure that the lender's not gonna close out your line of credit because it's been drawn down to zero for a, a while. So anyways, that's one of the strategies that I've been using uh, or that I've used because I obviously wanna have my cash available when it's time. Um, and if you don't have a line of credit and you have a ton of equity in your properties, that's also a, a thought, right? It, it is tied to prime, obviously prime's at 8% now, uh, but, to have that as like a rainy day fund or an opportunity fund. So that way, like, let's say you find a home run deal and you need to have cash right away. This is something that you might consider getting because you don't pay interest until you draw on it. And um, and then obviously, if, if you believe like I do, that Prime is gonna start going down in the near-ish future, uh, then if your rate's floating, then you know that it, it's gonna start to float down a bit and uh, possibly make sense. So if you can make greater than 8% interest or whatever the interest rate's gonna be on that line of credit on your money, or you think that you can do that, then it's worth getting a line of credit. Um, and then also, like I said, as Prime goes down, a lot of times that line of credit, uh, the interest rate on that line of credit will also go down. So um, that is it, everybody. Uh, we'll see kind of what happens in the next few weeks. We do have some more data coming out um, that can give us a little bit more insight on what the Fed might do when they meet in May. But the general consensus currently is that a lot of people believe the Fed will do one more 25 basis point hike and that, uh, before taking a pause and then moving from that pause to uh, decreasing rates. And they think that could be happening as uh, like kind of the forecast that I've been seeing from a lot of economists and people who really study this data is that we could see rates going down um, towards the end of the year or the beginning of 2024. So that could be really good news for us. Uh, that is prime though. So we'll have to see what happens with treasuries um, over the next you know, six months or so. Uh, but the general consensus there is also that treasuries will be dropping. So that means that's good news for us with rates. As long as no other crazy banking issues pop up um, as treasuries go down, we should see some rates improve, meaning that lenders won't start increasing spreads or even pulling back on lending. Uh, they might start creeping back into the market slowly, treading lightly um, and lending more. But there are plenty of opportunities here, a financing opportunity here in San Diego um, for multifamily specifically. Uh, the commercial market is a whole other can of worms. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, media is talking about how there's $1.4 trillion worth of commercial real estate debt that will be coming due uh, very soon, like in the next year or so. And what are those people going to do, especially the office sector uh, is likely going to have some problems because obviously banks don't like risk. And there is a lot of chatter about the massive vacancy of office space across the country. Um, so that is going to make financing for office buildings a little tough. Um, but anyways, if you guys have questions about any opportunities that you're looking at, I'm happy to underwrite them. We do it all day long, so it's really quick for us. Um, we're generally turning our financing quotes around within, uh, if not same day, usually uh, the next day. So uh, if you have any questions, you're curious about any scenarios, if you got anything kind of outside of the box, which seems to be what I'm seeing right now, a lot of just a lot of people getting creative, um, do reach out. I'd be happy to take a look at it and let you know what you can do.